Hello, everybody. I am uh, I'm here with um, five members of the 2010 Rangers as we try and uh, celebrate the anniversary of the start of the 2010 season, which was the Rangers' first World Series run, and it started on April 5th, 2010. And so we are right up against that anniversary. Um, if you're watching this on your screen, the old man at the top left is Michael Young. Uh, below him in our Brady Bunch scenario, David Murphy. Wave hello, David. Uh, below him, Ian Kinsler from his home. Ian, say hello. Hello. Um, the guy who's touching his face in the era when we're not supposed to be touching our faces is Derek Holland. Say hello, Derek. He'll be quiet. And then, of course, the steady Colby Lewis. Hello, Colby. Say hello to everybody. How's it going, Evan? It's going good, guys. Thank you for joining me. Um, so I wanted to, I, I just wanted to get you guys together to talk a little bit about 2010. I mean, I, I, all of you guys had long careers. It, it, have you had a more fun season than what 2010 ended up being? Uh, 2011, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> was it more fun? Was 2011 more fun? Or the way it ended, was that more disappointing? Um, I, mean, I think it's disappointing. Yes. Yeah, I think eleven was more fun just because <clears throat> we knew that we we're going to go out and beat everybody's ass. So I think that's the 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 big thing. We knew we we're the best team in, in in baseball, and we showed it in ten. And I think we had a lot more fun, um, especially down the stretch in in ten, just because we knew that we could basically go out and win every series. So. So at the, at the start of 2010, this team was coming off of, of a good year in 09 and, and kind of a surprising year for a lot of people. What was the feeling that you guys kind of generated going into the season um, coming out of spring training? Um, I think that was the first year where we kind of knew heading into the into the season that we were the team to beat. I think we kind of told ourselves that for a while, but Anaheim was kind of just a really, really good team. And I think for a while we kind of thought, all right, if we go out and – play well and a couple of their guys have some down years or maybe a couple of their guys or Vladdy gets both of his feet run over by a bus, then we have a really good chance to, to beat them. But they were just really good. And I think getting in 2010 was like the first time where we knew like, all right, we're the best team. We just have to go play now and this thing should go our way. And to be honest with you, with like a couple exceptions, like I don't think a lot of, at least from a position player standpoint, not many of our guys had really like big or career years. We just – we pitched really well. Um, we were just a top to bottom, just a really solid team. I think something that stands out too was in 2009. That was my first year in Kinsler, and uh, those guys were pretty upset after seeing you know the Angels celebrate right in front of our faces. And I, I had no clue what to think of that. You know, it was my first time there, and hearing those guys talk that motivated like me and the younger guys that were there too. You know, coming into next year, like. You know, we got to see somebody else celebrate. We need to go out and try to celebrate in front of somebody else. But I also think, uh, you know, Vlad Vlad didn't get both his feet run over, but he got he got to put on a Rangers unit. Yeah. So I think that was huge for us because he killed us. He killed us. And, and to see him in the middle of our lineup uh, doing Vlad things was, was also motivating. What was it like to bring him into the clubhouse? Because he had, like you said, Ian, he had killed this club so, so much over the previous six years. I still remember what it was like. Uh, I was on vacation, and I remember where I was when I picked up the phone and I saw that we had signed him. And not only seeing him on the other side for so many years and him kill us with the Angels, but just what a big fan I was of him uh, growing up and as a kid and so just to be able to, to play with him and uh, and know that was going to solidify our lineup after you know and, and not to mention Josh was coming off of a down year in 09 but I think everybody knew what he was capable of so it was kind of one of those things where I think we had the confidence uh, top to bottom that we were going to be solid throughout. Colby when you walked into this clubhouse after being away for the start of 2010, what was your immediate sense of what this team was? Uh, fun and energetic. I mean, I was, I played with Mikey and, um, so it wasn't like I was like super, you know, um, what I would call it, uh, just walking into a new atmosphere. I mean, all the familiar faces from the, you know, 
from the front office to the you guys, the reporters, everything else kind of made it real comfortable. But yeah, I mean, I didn't really know exactly in spring training, like especially right at the beginning when we had to go to the meeting for watch. So um, I was like, okay, what kind of what, what's going on here? But um, I think once we started to roll through uh, spring and we everybody kind of knew their roles, I was like, man, this is going to be a great club. And then we just started out on on on, uh, on the track that we had, and everybody stayed healthy for for the most part. I mean. Um, you know, our rotation, our top three guys all made what 150 plus innings, something like that. So, um, and then we had Holland and, and Harrison and, and, um, uh, uh, Tommy pick up the slack there in, in the bottom. And it was, um, of course, picking up the cliff halfway through was made it, uh, solidified things for us. So just so hold on, just to, just to piggyback what Colby said, that was really the first year, um, going into the season I and from my opinion I don't know how you guys feel about it but that we really had we really had pitching that we could depend on um you know CJ was making the move which we all didn't we we kind of didn't know how it was going to go but we knew he was going to think he's the best and and we had Colby we had we had a horse in the rotation with Colby you know we had we had guys like Tommy and, and Matt Harrison coming over we saw him but we had arms finally um, and did we have that bona fide ace like Cliff? You know, probably not, but every single guy in that rotation, they were all extremely competitive, extremely consistent, and that made us feel, you know, for me, I don't know, that made, that made me feel a lot more confident going into the season also. Yeah, I, I would – I was going to say the exact same thing. I mean, that was – we had some good pitchers in the past, but never like a really great staff, and we knew heading in that was it legit staff and in order to have that we had had kind of young position players stepping up for a long time from Kins to Murph and Nelly and Elvis and all these guys stepping up and all of a sudden we looked in 2010 and you know Colby's coming off you know being hugely productive in Japan kind of like what Kins was saying um, we didn't know how CJ thing was going to turn out but we knew he'd be ready for it we knew he'd do everything in his power to be ready for it and then we got young pitchers like Derek and, and Tommy and Harry coming in and they just stepped up, and we were dying for that to happen. All of a sudden, we looked up, and um, we just had this ton of momentum built up. And next thing you know, we blink from breaking camp and surprise. We blink, and here's a trade deadline. And next thing you know, Cliff's in our clubhouse. And at that point, we were just – we were rolling. We were the best team in the league at that point. You know, Kobe, you mentioned uh, something. In, oh, I'm sorry, David. Go ahead. No, I think it's funny to think about, too, because I think it's easily forgotten that our opening day starter was Scott Feldman, who was coming off a good 2009 – and we had gone out and we had gotten Rich Harden in the offseason, who didn't, and he didn't even end up being on our postseason roster. But um, I think that that kind of speaks to our offense, too. We knew that we had Hollis and, excuse me, Harrison, Hall, and those young guys coming up, and that our offense was going to do the job if we could get anything out of our pitching. And then going back to 2009, we wanted Halliday so bad at the trade deadline, or at least we did amongst the players that if we got to the trade deadline and we we're in a good position, we were going to be in a better spot where we could then pull the trigger, and we ended up doing that. So, the, Colby, you mentioned one thing, and I, I thought it was – obviously I wasn't in the room. I, I only heard snippets after the fact. But you mentioned the spring training meeting with Wash where he made the, you know, the acknowledgement about the, the positive test for cocaine and all of that. How, did that galvanize the team? Was that a – was that a significant moment in the coming together of this team? I mean, from what uh, I was brand new. So coming back in, I mean, I just kind of looked towards, you know, Mikey and those guys. And I, I don't think it affected us at all. I think he came to, he, he owned it and it was, and it was done. And it was just washed, washed it basically. And we were like, all right, let's go play ball. I don't think there was like something, you know, this negative cloud hanging over our heads, especially after that. Um, he was right back to wash being washed and joking around and having a good time. Mikey, you had a pretty big role in that meeting. Uh, I don't – honestly, I don't really remember it. Um, I really don't. I think it's more credit to, one, we had a strong clubhouse. We had a great group of guys. And, two, it's, it's just Wash. Um, Wash is you – know, his words and his body language were like he knew it was a big deal, but it wasn't something he was going to haggle over. So, we just kind of – we just hopped on board. Uh, it wasn't something we were going to – if he didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal, uh, then we weren't going to either. And – we had a little meeting. We talked about it for you know, a few minutes. The next thing you know, we were back on the, on the backfields taking ground balls. It really wasn't uh, – I didn't think it was that big of a deal. 
Evan, to, to your, uh, your question, I just think looking back on that club, we just had a group of guys that really didn't care about all that nonsense. Like we just wanted to play baseball and we wanted to have fun playing baseball and we wanted to win. And we weren't really going to let any of those types of distractions get in our way or cause, you know, rifts in the clubhouse or anything like that. It was, it was just, we, we all enjoyed playing ball together and we just wanted to win games. And, and that was our focus. Damn it. Evan. Evan, are you serious? Giant head, the headset on because you can take the call from that. I could, uh, what time, what time was your rock? You get a fine for that at this point in time. Um, but are you on the ones and twos right now? Are you? Don't on text and drive, Evan. I was a doctor. Shockingly enough, it was a doctor's office calling for me. Um, guys, so on opening day, you guys were no hit for six innings against Toronto, and then came back and had that that big walk off win. Uh, one game does not certainly make a season, but it it, it 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 boosted this team's energy for the start of the season. Does anybody remember anything particular about that about that day or that that atmosphere? <laughs> let the I'll let the three position players that played talk about it. I don't remember it hardly at all. We were getting no well, hit first, by Sean Markham. Um, <laughs> <laughs> throwing like 83, 84 the whole game and uh, it was just a lot of really bad contact. But, again, I mean, I, I don't have many – a ton of memories from that game. I, again, I, I look back at that season and that team, whether it's opening day or day two or whatever, and it was just a team that really believed in ourselves. So, getting no, no hit through six innings really what didn't seem like that big of a deal. Um, it, was, it was a team that really believed that eventually we're going to bust through. We were just so deep and so talented that we felt like no matter what the situation was, our pitching wasn't to keep us in games. And we just keep chipping away offensively. We're going to find a way to score. I want to say I remember Mikey hitting a big double uh, to right center. And then uh, I remember Nelly hitting a homer into the bullpen. I think it was like a changeup or something. And he <laughs> hit it. Off. I, I remember mean, it this, Murph. It wouldn't have been a home run in any other ballpark at any other time. But the wind was howling out that day. And that was a huge boost. I think, I think, I think it shows uh, you have a giant, long, rectangular brain you remember <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mikey, you did you did have that double in the ninth inning that kind of started that, and then Vlad had an infield single, and then the big hit was Salty, and that was you know the the amazing thing about that that was Salty's only RBI all year for you guys. Nice. Salty, <laughs> big one, limited edition. He didn't score. The, he didn't score the run though. No, the pinch runner at third base was uh, was David Murphy. That's right. Pinch ran for Va for Vladimir Guerrero. Um, wow. So all summer long, I think the media and, and the fan base was a little bit caught up in the whole bankruptcy thing and everything that was going on off the field. You guys didn't get caught up in that. But what did the ability for this team in the middle of all that to kind of swoop in and, and go make the Cliff Lee trade, what did that do for you guys in terms of – like knowing how serious this club really was about about where you were headed. I I think getting a guy of Cliff's caliber at that time of his career, he was he was the best pitcher in the game at that time, uh, or one of three, I guess. If I don't even know who the other guys were, but I'm just saying three because <laughs> one one being best but he was he was in in our opinion and when we got him he was the best pitcher in the game it seemed like he was going seven eight nine innings every time he had the ball um and his cockiness and confidence fit like perfectly with our club um i can remember his first his first pitchers meeting with mike maddox <laughs> uh, mike had like he had the whole lineup ready to go every single night this guy studied hard is always on top of things on the computer uh kind of ahead of his time with that but he would go over it with both catchers and the starting pitcher right before the game in the training room um and if you were if, if you weren't late mike was pissed because he did a lot of work a lot of homework to get ready for this meeting and cliff comes walking in with his jacket on like two minutes late 
and Mike's sitting there waiting for him with the other catchers. And he says, well, look, I want you to go over the lineup, Cliff. Uh, how are you going to pitch these guys? And Cliff's like, what? I don't, what are you talking about? Uh, and Mike said, well, okay, then fine. I'll, I'll do it. And so he starts with, I think it was like, I don't know who, who he's pitching against, but he, Eric Ibar or something. He goes down the lineup. He gets to like the three hole and Cliff stops him. This is Cliff's like first outing with our club. He barely knows Mike. And he stops Mike and he says, uh, we don't have to do this. I'm going to throw fastballs in the outside corner until, they, until I see him make an adjustment. And then I'm just going to throw something different and get him out. And Mike was like, uh, all right. And I think he went out through eight and just dominated. So that was kind of Cliff's, Cliff's thing when we got him. It was, it, was, uh, it was something that we'd, you know, we never played behind before. And for you guys, for the pitchers, what was it like there? I mean, for, you're a young lefty at that point in time. And, and to add him and, and Colby, just to, to add that kind of depth and, and, and have that, what did it do for, for the, the overall mentality of the rotation? I mean, for me, it was funny just trying to talk to him to get advice and everything. And it was exactly how Ken's just said it. Like, I'm like, hey, what do you do to this guy? He's like, I don't know. I just grab the ball and I throw it, you know, swing and miss. Like, that's just how he was. Like, he just talked about I'll throw cutters in and sinkers away and we'll see what they do. That's it. Like, he never had, like, a true, like, I don't know, this is my exact way of doing it. He just he would just get out there and say, yeah, I just throw the ball and watch him miss it. Yeah, and, and, did, and did, didn't he start the he started the year in Seattle that year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember talking to him. He's like, dude, all I do is throw fastballs down the way. He's like, let him hit as far as I could because it's Seattle. Because like, I threw like ninety fastballs out of a hundred pitches. So, so yeah. I mean, that was his mentality. He's like, live live down live down the way. And he said, what's what's it? They they started to go get it, and he goes, then he pound them in, and then flip the breaking ball in occasionally. It was like as simple as process as you could get. Yeah, I remember I was talking to him one time, like, hey, Matt, because I think the year before, or 2008, I think he won the Cy Young. And I was like, before that, he was good, but he wasn't anything like, obviously, what he became. I'm like, what was the difference? He goes, yeah, I went home that offseason. I just told myself, I'm not going to walk anybody anymore. And that's literally all he said. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to walk anybody ever. Like, the odds are all with me. Like, he went, like, straight, like, gambling cliff mode. Like, the odds are all in the house. Like, I have seven defenders behind me and a catcher, and I know it's coming, and he doesn't. So I'm just going to throw strikes, and it'll all just kind of go my way eventually. And that's seriously how it is. You just, like, flooded the zone with everything. As a defense, you love it because you're going to be getting action. It was um, pretty cool, man. You combine that with the guys we had, and it was a perfect fit. Yeah, and he'd run on and off the field, work super quick. I mean, it was like, you know, an infielder's dream, I think, for that to play, play behind him, I'm, I'm sure. Right, guys? Yeah, CJ ran off and off the field too. I think. Yeah, he got inspired by him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, but we had guys. We had guys that work work quickly in that rotation. Besides Swan, really. Besides Feldman. Yeah. Um, but Colby worked quick. I mean, Holland worked pretty quick. Harrison worked quick. Tommy worked quick. Um, you know, CJ. It kind of depended, but he had he had the ability to work quick. And then you just <laughs> had Cliff in there, and it was just like, we have a bunch of guys that look like they really don't care what happens on the mound and they're just going to trust their stuff and, and go after guys. And it just, it, it worked. Hey, so for me, the most unusual thing of the season was, um, I just can't let anything go on this, but did anybody at any point in time in the dugout think that Benji Molina was actually going to complete a cycle that night? Yeah, I had money on it before the game even started. Yeah, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Lock. But like uh, the point that he's got three hits is, is, is did it even cross anybody's mind because he's Benji Molina? No, I mean, but I will say, like, we I think we talked about it when he needed the triple, and we're. I remember Where's we got to hit it. We were pretty, but yeah, we're like, if this is there's one place he can do it, it's here. You throw it out in the triangle, it's like 425 feet away. It's like if he can find a way to toss one out there, he's got a shot. Um, and assuming like every other of like the defenders for the Red Sox like simultaneously have heart attacks, then he could definitely <laughs> – Didn't he hey, – didn't he pull both quads getting the third too? Yeah, he pulled, he, pulled, he pulled a lot of muscles, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's true. Yeah. Guys, what, the, what stands out for you all about the, the Tampa Bay series? Oh, the man. celebration? 
<laughs> oh, we know no team won a home game. Right. True. Yeah, it was um man, I I remember yeah, the game 5 was big. I remember like honestly for like all of us, we probably I remember when our plane was landing coming from Arlington to there in game 5. I think pretty pretty much all of us were pretty pissed at that point that we were even back there. You know, we had two chances at home to rack, you know, to lock it up at home, but Tampa Bay was a really tough kind of resilient team and we get back and but at that point we were kind of just really super super confident um you know we had cliff on the mound and we just we kind of we at no point even though we were on the road at no point did we think that we were losing that game we knew that that game was going to be a w we just had to go out next week i really remember uh i really remember game three because we won the first two on the road and then the way the way that the ballpark was when we got back in the crowd and just the atmosphere difference from Tampa to, to Texas was just out. Of, it was out of control and it was unbelievable to see the ballpark that way when we got back. Um, that's, that's kind of what I remember. That was the first time really besides opening days that we'd been in the ballpark and it's been that hectic and that crazy and, and people were just going bananas for baseball. So that was, that was something that I remembered. Did you hit a homer in that game? Garza. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to throw me a combia. <laughs> Fried chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was um that that was that was a fun game. <laughs> <laughs> I think I Can remember game something nice about it. I, rem- I remember just going up against Price, and obviously we had confidence just with Cliff going, but I felt like um, I was wondering how their experience being in the World Series a few years before versus, uh, for the most part, our lack of experience in the postseason, uh, how those two things were going to play out. And I feel like those questions were answered early on because our offense performed so well. I think I remember one one part of game five, too. I think remember during game three and game four, the Tampa Bay guys were kind of like giving it back to us with the claw and antler thing from their dugout. Yeah, they started doing I remember that. that. It was kind of annoying, actually, that they started doing it. And all of a sudden, it was in game five, and I forget what the situation was. And Nelly took off from like second, like on an infield hit. I think he thought he was invisible. Like he just kept going and didn't stop. He somehow <laughs> makes it home. He slides huge like pile of dirt and dust at the plate, and he gets up and just like – does the freaking antlers to the entire stadium. <laughs> we're like totally laughing. And at that point, we're like, we knew we were loose. Like, we got to an early lead, and we knew we were we, – uh, honestly, even early in the game, we knew we were taking them down at that point. Take them over there. What does everybody remember about Colby starting game two of the ALCS? Because I thought that was just so important after, you know, losing the lead in game one. You don't want to go down 2 nothing to the Yankees. That was a, that was a big, big moment. Colby, Colby was our steady hand all year. Like, he was he was our stopper pretty much. I mean, we had Cliff, but that was halfway through the year. But Colby was our guy that we could depend on, like, every five days. He was going to give the same outing every five days, whether he gave up three solo shots or one solo shot. He never walked anybody. He never got himself in trouble. And that's what he did. I mean, that's what he did in that, that playoff game. He was just typical Colby, like not very many emotions, work quick, pound his fastball on a slider and just, and just stick to his game plan. He never, he never got away from his game plan, which was, which was impressive. In that. Right now either Colby, what do you, you got anything on that game? <laughs> no, I mean, I like, like I've always said, I mean, the playoffs were, were fun, but I mean, like we all, we, we all had to stay loose and know, know your role. I mean, you can't go up there and be all hyped up and think you could throw 100 when you throw 90, you know. So, um, you know, I mean, it was fun. It was easy to go out there and pitch because I know I had eight other guys behind me, especially Benji back there, you know. And then um, just to be able to have that confidence just to go out and know you're even going to get more strikes than you should because Benji's big butt back there. So uh, blocking everything, framing everything. So, I mean, it was just I, – I wasn't – I mean – course it was Tampa they only had I mean I wanted maybe 20,000 people you know so um 
it wasn't like a crazy atmosphere like Ken said. When we came home, that was my first time, really, being a huge packed house, being in front of that many people, like when something like that is on the line. Um, so um, it was just, it was fun. It was nice and relaxed and went and did it. The kids are looking through the window right now. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think I think yeah. going back to the, that, that Yankee series when Colby started, I remember like after game one, this is when I think, you know, we won, beat Tampa in five games and we get home and we lost game one, Yankees came back and beat us in game one. But I remember like, a lot of, I mean, it's playoff time, so it's a lot of the national media. And the way they were framing their questions to us after the game was almost like, how are you guys, in a, how are you guys not going to fold? Like, everyone folds against them after games like this. How are you guys going to keep your heads up? How are you guys going to go back and play? And I was floored by, like, that line of questioning. Like, like you guys don't know. We're winning this series. Like, we're better. I know they went to the World Series the year before. I think, no, they were the defending champs, actually. Um, but we're winning this series. And sure enough, we went out, took care of business in game two, and then just throw the boot at him in game three and game four. Straight up the booty hole, man. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I think the media, we all got caught up in, after that that game one loss to the Yankees, we all get caught up in stats, right? And it was this team, the history, even though nobody was a part of that, this team had that history against the Yankees of playoff defeats year after year after year to the Yankees. That None of that may, ever enters into your guys' thoughts, but is that the kind of question you guys were, were, were getting from people? Yeah, that was – that was the media was driving that stake in hard. That was kind of – all the questioning really was about was – the rain. The the only time the Rangers have been to the playoffs, they've been they've been killed by the Yankees. Um, yeah, it was just ninety six, ninety nine, ninety six, nine, whatever it was. The years that they went and played the Yankees, and that's all they talked about is how you know, it's just going to be a repeat of what was what was going to happen to us ten years before that. You know. Did you love me for asking questions like that, Ian? Loved you. <laughs> oh. What was the atmosphere like for Game Six? No, I'll let Colby take that one. That's right. That's cool. Um, well, actually, I mean, I, we didn't know if it was going to start on time. Yeah. It was like raining and, and it was in between. And, and uh, then, um, oh, gosh, uh, Wash came in and said, we're starting on time. So I was like, all right, we just go go to business, go out there, get loose, get do all my normal stuff. And, and I know early, I think uh, even uh, if you look at some of Hughes' stuff, like the – just the moisture in the air and stuff. My even my breaking ball stuff wasn't very good, but I didn't I didn't walk guys. I I I, I felt like I just still tried to pound the zone, you know. So I think I got away with a lot of pitches early in the game, and then once these guys gave me a, a break and in, in uh, what was it the fourth or fifth inning there when it started to open up, um, then it was just easy. You just go out there and throw the fastball down and away, and and uh, because they, they knew that they had to get base runners on. So um, at that point, you just start throwing all your all your good stuff at them and and uh, having fun. Mikey, we talked about like in two thousand five and two thousand six and two thousand seven. I I remember having conversations with you and Blaylock and Teixeira about the idea of wanting to have that dog pile and never having that dog pile. So when you got that opportunity. Is there anything that sticks with you from from that moment of what it was like to actually be champions of the American League? Yeah, it was a pretty incredible moment. I mean, I think like again, I think we were all the you know for those teams, we all had a ton. Those teams had a ton of postseason experience when it was all said and done. But I think that we can all agree, like postseason series and games are all about momentum. You know, they if you have it, you want to keep it. If they have it, you got to put an end to it right away. And I think during Game Six, I think we had all the momentum the entire time. Number one, we were at home. Colby was going, and they knew that even if they had it, if they snuck by Colby in game six, we had Cliff in game seven. So we knew we had all the momentum in that game and that series, and we just had to find a way to kind of get that first domino to go. And I think Vladdy's big double was it. You know, once we took a lead right there, that was all she wrote. Is there anything about the World Series, guys, that sticks out? I mean, I know it was everybody's first trip, but. Yeah. It almost seemed like for fans it was the idea that this team made it to the World Series more than the idea of beating the Giants. I mean, to be to be brutally honest, we were 
looking back, we were overconfident going into that series. Um, we we kind of looked at the Giants like we're going to kind of walk right through them uh, with the way that we've been playing baseball. And, you know, they had a bunch of veteran players that had, you know, pay, you know, playoff – playoff experience they had it they had a young catcher and, and a pretty young staff um but we kind of overlooked them i feel like uh, i don't know how you guys feel but i felt like we were we were we were, we were right <laughs> what you do there, Dad? <laughs> what happened? sorry my dog's going nuts <laughs> talking you're about to sorry kids dog. there he is there is bruce that's good. I'm glad because I thought Derek was just sleeping with his eyes open this entire time anyway, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to take that, what Ian just said about the uh, – yeah, about... um, yeah, we definitely went in knowing how well we played the Yankee series, that we were, gonna, we, were, we were ready to go. I think we kept talking about how our pitching was really good, and that was going to kind of lead the way for us with Cliff and CJ, Colby, Derek. We had Tommy. We had – we were, we were good. We knew we were good. Um, but I think the whole time we kind of underestimated that they had the same exact thing. You know, they had Tim Lincecum and Matt Cain, who were at the top of their games at the time. And, you know, Jonathan Sanchez was a solid pitcher. And their rookie lefty throwing game four was a garner. So, I mean, they had a really, really good team. Um, that ballpark is big for home field advantage. Uh, that, that crowd was going bananas in game one and game two. And they went out there and they executed, man. If they – I mean – they beat us in five games. If you – Cliff Lee at that point was at the top of his game. And if you beat Cliff twice, you deserve to be world champs. And that's what they did. And it, uh, looking back, I mean, Jonathan Sanchez was a good pitcher at the time. And Bumgarner was kind of unknown. He had an okay year. But from, from our perspective, we killed lefties that year. Wow. Killed lefties. So we were like Jonathan Sanchez and Bumgarner. Like, come on. We're going we're gonna to route these guys. We're going to have to beat Linscombe. Linscombe's going to be a tough matchup. But we got Kane. We're going we're gonna to kill Kane. And Bumgarner and, and Sanchez fall right into what, what our strength is. So we kind of overlooked how good those guys were on the mound at the time. But they still came out and played extremely well. Um, you know, I mean, I remember opening up the paper – in the clubhouse before game one and we were basically labeled as the favorite instead of the underdog, which we had been, you know, before, but regardless, I don't think there was any arrogance or anything that played into it that led to our demise. I mean, I think, you know, ultimately it was their play and their execution, which, which led to them winning. Yeah. hundred percent. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I've kept you for forever. Um, I really appreciate this. I think fans are going to, are going to love this. Is there any – anybody got any last thoughts about that 2010 season that we didn't hit on? I remember in the World Series I threw one strike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. I do remember that. Well, Derek, you'll have a bigger role when we do this for the 2011 World Series, and we talk about what uh, about your start in uh, in that series. Cool. Maybe we maybe we can do that in person, though. That'd be good. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. You maybe. guys have been awesome. Good to digital. I appreciate see. it. Good to see all you boys. See Stay you guys. Locked up. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good to see you, fellas. Okay. Bye. Okay. Everybody yeah, stay well. And be well. We'll get back to baseball at some point in time here. Word. Thanks, right. guys. Thanks, Evan. Later, boys. Thanks, Evan. See you, boys. Bye. Bye, Evan.